In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at one of many techniques that you've got in Photoshop to get rid of an unwanted background. So we'll start out by selecting the item that you want to keep, and that is that lion head that you're seeing here. The easiest way to probably select an area that's very sharply defined is by using the quick selection tool. The area that's affected by this tool, which behaves or which you use like a brush tool, is controlled by setting the brush size. So I can increase or decrease the brush size like that. Or if you're into shortcuts, you can press the square brackets to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. And the right one will enlarge the brush area and the left one will decrease the size. I'm just going to keep the center of that brush within the area I want to keep. And you can see that I've just gone outside the edge. It's called having wobbly hands. And it does a pretty good job. We'll see there's a couple of areas down the edge here and up here where we've got too much selected. Now, by default, the quick selection tool is set to add to a selection as you're kind of painting with it. If you press the Alt or Option key on your keyboard, you change that behavior to subtracting from your selection. So for me to get rid of that little bit that I've selected too much, all I do is just paint over that. And I'm just going to make my brush size a little smaller, pressing the brackets again, holding down the Option key because I happen to be on a Mac. But if you're on a PC, hold down the Alt key to do that. And a little bit up the top here. And I'll just release that Option key and just add a little bit more up the top there. Now you can refine your selection at this stage by clicking Refine Edge. And because this is a quite, quite a sharply defined edge, the setting that I tend to use is the smoothing option that you've got up here and that sort of like evens things out a bit and there might still be some bits here and there that you want to reduce later on but rather than removing those unwanted pixels permanently I tend to apply a layer mask so that no pixels are actually harmed as we are clearing that background. Now the smart radius and radius edge detection settings I generally use when you've got more of a fuzzy edge I'm just going to increase that smoothness here and also cheating a little bit by shifting the edge inward a bit so I'm kind of forcing the selection to cut in to the line a bit and these other bits and pieces I'll fix in a in a, in a jiffy. Now you'll notice that this is currently output to a selection and that means that when I click OK I will actually get a selection but I can immediately output to a new layer with a layer mask and that means I can keep the background if I want to or just output to a layer mask which is what I'll do. Click OK and what will happen in our layers panel we now have a layers mask, the black bits um, hide part of the image, the white bits reveal part of the image. I can further edit the mask settings and a, and a layer mask is really a selection if you think about it. If I double click the mask thumbnail you'll see that I've got access to mask edge and that's very similar to what we saw before which is a refine edge command and we can adjust settings and again output to a layer mask and that will update this particular layer mask. I'll just leave this for now. Um, I'll show you a couple of other options here. Um, rather than uh, working with any of the settings, this is a great little setting to feather um, a selection, but it's like a live feather. What I'll do is I'll close that up and I'll just show you that when we paint on the mask, and I'll zoom in a little bit here and press the space bar to access the hand, hand tool. You'll see there's a couple of areas that we still want to fix. Now, painting with the paintbrush, you can paint with black or white and toggle those colors around by clicking up here. If I want to hide a little bit more, 
all I've got to do is change my brush size and paint with white. Make sure you have the mask selected when you do that. And if you do something like that accidentally, then you can swap the fore and background colors around. Now, a quick way of doing that is pressing the X on the keyboard, and then you're just painting with black again. If you're not sure whether your fore and background colors are actually set to black and white, just press the letter D on the keyboard. So I'm just pressing X. And this is sort of how you can further sort of correct your mask. Now just to show you that we haven't actually deleted any of the pixels in the background, if I press the shift key and click on the mask, I can temporarily disable it. And I'll switch that back on again and you'll see that everything is there. You can now save your document as a Photoshop file and that will have a transparent background so you can drop it onto anything else in another application, for instance in Adobe InDesign, or if you want to use this as an overlay in another Photoshop image, you can now use your Move tool and drag this layer, including the layer mask, onto another image to start creating a collage. That was it. Enjoy the tip.